Welcome back to ESL Katowice. ESL One, ESL One Katowice in my. Hey, I'm joined with Sponge. Sponge, how are you doing, sir? Good man. How are you? Well, I'm excited for you because you've had a pretty, pretty awesome day of it. I mean, you started off with, let's say, a rocky start against Fnatic, and then you went on to flip side. You, well, tell, talk me through it. Rocky's a nice way of putting it, but yeah, we got trashed by Fnatic, and then we uh, took on flip side on Cache, which is one of our stronger maps, and we managed to to give them a bit of a stomping, and that was that was good fun. So uh, we're hopefully not going to get eliminated here by Navi, but we'll give it our best crack. And now, for you, I mean, if you had to choose, is that the order you wanted to go in? You know, have a tough one first, get that out of the way, and then get a bit of a good game under your belt again? Well, Fnatic's out of the way. They already threw. We don't have to face them again. We don't have to verse Na'Vi, who just, they had a rough game against Fnatic as well. So uh, if we can come out with our A game off the bat, I think we can uh, probably take, take Na'Vi down. Um, but yeah, that is the order I thought it was going to go in. It's kind of predetermined subconsciously that, hey, we're going to probably verse Flipside, then Na'Vi, and that's the way we're going to get through. Now, obviously, you were playing through the, um, the challenger bracket, so that means you played uh, about three weeks ago here in Katowice as well, and a lot was made then about your energy. And I mean, I see you with the flag now, and I see you putting up some flair here and around the desk. Tell us about that. Where does that come from? Well, we're always been like a loud team, um, and we're very momentum-based, so the louder we get, the uh, more excited we get, the, the better we play. Uh, we just need to kind of translate that to when we're losing, you know? So it's just, I think it's a bit of the Australian uh, larrikin attitude as well, you know? We're loud, we're just here, we're having fun, and we're just, we're just normal guys, you know? Now, I mean, it, with, the, with the game, I mean, you were standing up, you were really like almost celebrating every point. I mean, is that, is that just, will we see that now? This is your first game out on this stage? I mean, I want to see that. I'm sure the guys at home want to see that. Well, that's, the crowd seems to love it, so uh, the people on the stream seem to love it. So I'll, I'll give them to it if we're winning. If uh, we're losing, hey, it would translate to maybe a bit, bit quieter team, but we'll still be amped up, we'll still be trying to win, and we'll be giving our all. So. Well, it sounds like you've got the right attitude, so I wish you the best of luck. Please join your team, and uh, hopefully we'll speak later, yeah? Thank you very much. Sponge right there. Of course, a round of applause. The crowd's fantastic here. And now I come over to you, good sir. Guardian, how you doing? Um... Not good. We just lost the game, so, yeah. Fnatic is a tough team, though, to be fair. Yeah, we just got destroyed, so, yeah. They, they were stronger, but what can I do about it? So, okay, talk me through that. You're, you're in that, you're having a tough game against them. I mean, what do you tell, what, what do you tell the guys before this game? Uh, actually, we were saying that we have some chances, but we didn't know about map, that what will we play, so... Uh, we, we have seen some chances, but we just got destroyed, so... And, and what do you think went wrong in those chance situations? I mean, was, was it some, some not performing? I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what... Is there anything in particular you can pinpoint? Actually, we just lost so many stupid rounds, like pistol round 1v4 and then 5 versus 3 rounds on city side, so... I would say we just made so many mistakes that we... that cost us, uh, cost us our game, so, yeah. Well, I'm hoping that you're going to bounce right back and give us an awesome matchup. For now, I say thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Good luck, sir. Please join your team. Now, of course, that means I have to pass it over to the man who always can. Okay. This crowd is fantastic. Over to you, machine. It, it really is, Sean. And of course, this is just day one. We've got so much more crowd participation. We've got four days of CSGO. It's, it's kind of crazy to see. And of course, I think it's about time we did some introductions once again. Uh, I'm, of course, Alex Machine Richardson. And joining me, my permanent members, we have Spencer Hiko Martin, Casper Cadian Muller. And of course, we have Lauren Pansy Scott joining, as well as a, a new face. I'm not going to call you a fresh face like Lee. You're a new face. That's uh, Stuart Tosspot Saw. So, uh, first things first, Vox up against Navi. It's about time we start talking about both the Australians and just a little bit about both their route here, because with the offline qualifiers, those guys, they made a, well, again, they've done it again, but 36 hour trip. That's a big journey straight off the bat to get here, reset their sleeping patterns. And the first thing I did when I saw Sponge, I was like, what time is it in Australia? He was like, yeah, it's 1 a.m. Um, it's about time I went to bed. <laughs> so. That's still something to talk about. But the first thing, I'm gonna, and the first person I'm going to talk to is Lauren. You had a big discussion uh, with Sponge, just having a kind of casual chat, and you got yeah. quite a good, good bit of intel from the Vox guys. Yeah, I, I thought it was worthwhile to speak to the guy because we don't necessarily see so much of them on a regular basis, unless you follow obviously the uh, oceanic scene and, and how they play it over there. But for me, he he sounded pretty confident until I saw him on the day prior to today. So we're having a quick discussion when you asked him about the time in Australia. 
And they'd just come off a loss in their own region. They were feeling pretty down about it. They were pretty somber. And all in all, it didn't seem like I was, I was like, okay, these guys are kind of screwing themselves out of this one a bit. But they came in today and they look fresh faced. They look ready. They look like they want to play this game to the absolute potential they have. And in the discussion, it was going through the maps, you know, who they want to avoid, who they want to face. And to be fair, they did say to me, we think we can take Flipside. We are pretty confident if it's our map. It's all about maps for these guys and getting that confidence going early and generally getting the right players playing well for them as well because your know, sponge will play around his key players it's there's so many factors that could give them the win but navi's a big team yeah and you talk about key players and well, we'll come back to that actually for vox but first actually i'm going to talk to you hiko a little bit about navi and just on the stage he guardian seemed very kind of down and i can't imagine that communications between the team is going to be pretty fantastic at this point i'm actually going to come to you as well casper but first hiko how do you feel navi are going to fare in this one uh, I know that Navi is one of those, you know, another one of those emotional teams. They, they really kind of feed on the emotion. Um, but actually, with that being said, there's been a lot of tournaments where they actually did have a really bad start, but they were able to bounce back and actually come through and, you know, have a really good showing. Um, so I don't cut them out at all. I think, you know, it was a, a rough start for them, but I fully expect them to, to show what they're actually worth here. And Casper? Yeah, they're emotional in a good way. If they're winning, they're going to get, like, a big boost. But if they're losing, they're still really good at like getting back up again. And I think it's kind of the experience of like Zeus and Ed Edward, who's been around the scene for like ages, that even though you're behind 0 6 or something like that, you can still bring it back on. And they certainly do that at times. So, perhaps that. To be fair, though, you've got to raise the point that Top Gun and Sponge are also around like WCG and all these like crazy things like a long time ago. These are not new to the game. They should be able to control the emotions as well. But even they say, if, if we start tilting early, we're out of it. It's, you know, even some of those experienced players seem to find this slight kind of issue with, uh, again, that focus at the moment. Yeah, and Casper, you, you, you still have this idea that despite Navi tilting somewhat, you think that there's, there's a real shot, and is it about starting strong? I know that's something you mentioned before. Yeah, they, they are the favorites. They also have the highest seed in this one, so they can pick this, the side of the, of the Mavits, which is going to be played. And also Lauren saying that these Vox guys have been around for ages. One of the things which could be like concerning for me, and we can like talk around that on the disc, is the way that they're cheering. It's like insane. Yeah. Could that be too much sometimes? Could they lose focus and, and simply celebrating too much? I mean, of course it's going to boost their morale, but you need to be calm and collective. I'm going to throw that one at Stuart. I am Navi's curse. Just want you to be aware, in right. any broadcast I've ever been involved in in Counter-Strike that's involved Navi, they've lost. So I'm throwing that one out there as the exact reason. And I've been trying to get excited about Navi for a long time. And they've never quite lived up to the hype of the brand, right. which they always deliver. And then every time I go and see Zero Gravity in an event, he'll be like, they boot camped really hard, they're ready for this, they're going to deliver. And so, you know, as a, as a commentator, you go, you bring that in, it's like, just got this grade A information from Zero Gravity, it's like, they're, they're ready, and all goes, to, all goes <laughs> down. So, yeah, unfortunately, that definitely means Vox are going to win. Okay, so we've got. And you've been on holiday <laughs> to Australia recently. Right? I've been doing some research over Christmas and went to Australia. Uh, I can and, and had a great uh, cricket conversation with Sponge earlier, which you know, definitely he watched the same match I watched. I mean, there's a connection there. <laughs> Beautiful. So you've really done your research about Vox Eminor, even going to the, to Australia to, the, to that extent. And that's real dedication. I, I thought I saw a glimpse of Matt Vitas. I think we're just going to hold clear on that one for now. But it does mean that we can start talking about maps, guys. Uh, going into this one, we saw, of course, Navi on Cobble. Uh, that's the only time we've kind of seen them play here on the main stage. And Vox, of course, they, we've seen them on Dust2. They chose to play that one, I believe. I don't want to get that wrong. Yeah, they so we saw them on Cobb, we saw them on Cash. Uh, Dust2 and Cash, sorry. And yeah. to be fair, discussing really early on with Sponge, he did say, sadly, we'd never really prior to that, apart from I think one game against Dignitas, had a chance to play some of our favorite maps. And we'd only ever seen the ones that they don't like. So we might actually get to see a bit more from them. But a conversation I was having with Anders is that a lot of these let's say, more favored teams like your Fnatic's will hold back on some of their more favored maps or even maps they're learning to get a lot better on. So I think for these guys, they need to give it all right now, Vox. They can't hold anything back. So I think map choice is vital. It is for sure. And, and we know that Navi is confident on both couple and overpass, so I don't think they're going to remove that. And I think that Vox didn't have the greatest of chance to practice these maps because yep. of the Ameri yeah. uh, not American, Australian scene. I don't think too many teams is interested in practicing that, so that's interesting as well as Navi being one of the best Dust2 teams out there. They have this extreme uh, talent of going short uh, catwalk, it's called, on Dust2, and just going like really methodically and just slow, and Guardian is going to open it up. And Hiko? I'd actually go out on a limb and say uh, Navi would drop Inferno. Um, 
Inferno is one of those maps where you can kind of get randomed, and you can all of a sudden find yourself in like a 5-0 or yeah. even 6-0, and all of a sudden like you're, you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole against a team that might not you know, play up to your, your shoes. Yeah, and an interesting point about uh, mentioning Inferno is uh, actually with the Fnatic side, I thought, I, I thought it was obviously straight away, <laughs> you know that Vox, or you've told me before, Vox based their play style on Fnatic. Like they take a lot away from it. The in-game leaders often talk, and the only real difference Sponge says to me is that he plays a little bit faster than most of you teams, so he tries to catch a lot of them out. He'll try and maybe speed up the plays so he can catch players off guard. However, he feels that in Australia, he won't have a, as much of an easier time picking up the one-to-one -one kills, because generally in his region, they are the top tier team. But out here, you don't get a second shot at actually hitting that one. So they need to be absolutely on point individually to make it work. That being said, of course, this past weekend, they lost to Team Immunity in uh, local events. So yeah. they, they have a competitive scene, it would appear. Yeah, and the thing about that is that a lot of kind of people are split, and I'm interested to know your thoughts, guys, is a lot of people saying, well, if Vox can't win a local tournament, how are they <laughs> going to win this major? And, another, and the other point, the counterpoint to that is, why would they show anything that they have in, uh, in store for the major? Here you go. Uh, yeah, I mean... It's, it goes with almost every team. Like up to a major, no match actually matters. Like as long as you actually qualify for the major and you're actually able to come here and attend it, anything leading up to that has no bearing at all. Like Eco is always saving himself at ESCA for the major. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a shot fire. But yeah, I mean, like someone had to. Even losing to an immunity, like even back in America, a lot of the, the even Cloud9 and CLG who actually have came out to Poland, like they have lost recently to teams that they shouldn't lose to. But we'll see them at another another level here because you know whether they're saving stuff or whether they actually are going to play you know the exact CS that they want to play, and so they're not going to be afraid of showing anything. I think that's what uh, we can expect here. See, and the thing is to kind of follow that point on. Top Gun was saying just yesterday that. The thing is, in Australia, all the teams look up to Vox as you know, the premium team that they have to their name for. Everyone anti-strats and looks into how they play. And then Vox are focusing on the EU style, trying to you know, copy a little bit of the Fnatic bit in there. So it's this kind of mismatch of focuses. And that's what they chalked up the loss to. But they were absolutely devastated when I first talked to them. So hopefully that mindset has been reset. Yeah, and of course, you already said Vox's mindset is so very key for this team's success. And Casper, you have something to contribute. In terms of the tactical aspect of Vox, there's two things that I need to point out, which is one of them copying the things from Fnatic. You need to be careful when copying things from other teams due to your players not being able to do the exact same things as, as their players. That's one thing. The other thing when we're talking about anti strat is that they played at the offline qualifier very recently and they simply had to fire out all of their strategies this time to make sure that they would get to this tournament because they weren't really expected to do that. So. Did they actually have time to come up with new strategies, and how are they going to handle that? Remember, Vox are no spring chickens, of course. Yes. Um, they've been to, this is their third major, I think. Um, so they have experience on this stage. Uh, this is not their you know, first, uh, first rodeo. And of course, you know, prior to this major, they got there through the Oceanic Invite. Here, though, they had that offline qualifiers. They had to prove to, the, to everyone that they deserved that spot that they were originally getting, and they have. Then again, it all sounds good when you say how many majors they've been. They hadn't picked up a single win until this one. That's, that's so, true. Wow. I, don't get me wrong. It, it sounds so negative, but it puts them in good stead going forward. Maybe this is where they need to be now. They finally got whatever the issues were in the previous ones, just being slightly outplayed or just other teams being individually better. Whatever it is, hopefully that's been resolved because... Na'Vi, you, you, as we said, we all saw Guardian. He did not look exactly the most uh, mentally focused, he looked pretty down about himself. And the thing is, if you hear the team next to you screaming that loud, that gets into your head pretty easy. And even we can hear these guys shouting from a million miles away. They're not exactly the quietest guys, Vox. I think that could even put Na'Vi on a bigger tilt. Yeah, I think that's a good point to make. And, and Hiko, regarding that, as well as, as well as what you want to say, is that uh, you've been on this stage, you've done this before. Does someone shouting, someone like, they pick up the first three rounds, of course, does, just even then, does that start putting you in any way on tilt? Or, I mean, honestly, you're, you're so focused on your game, and they have those noise-canceling headphones on. It's very hard to hear it. Um, at that point, I think it's more of uh, benefiting your own teams. And as Casper said, sometimes some teams actually do go overboard, and it actually gets into the, the you know the own team's head, overconfidence, uh, you know, whatever else, having that false sense of uh, hope, I guess it's called. But also, like. Vox has that, that kind of dark horse thing where we've talked about it a lot. Nobody has really watched them. Nobody really knows what to expect from them. So maybe they can come up with an upset here. And I think we can see some maps on, or we could see some maps on screen. You can now see, of course, see JKS, uh, one of the youngest players at the tournament at 19 years of, uh, of age. And 
he's going to be really needing to step up his performance if Fox want to pick this one up. And I'm pretty sure I saw Cash there, Lauren. Yeah, I, I think I saw Nuke as well and maybe Overpass. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, that would kind of stick true to trend as well, I think. Well, I mean, Casper, you talked about it before. Navi, you, you've got destroyed by it before, I think <laughs> yeah. you highlighted. as Ah, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, Cash, Overpass, and Nuke. So Navi opting to take away Nuke and Cash, and of course Vox quite wisely opting for Overpass. Casper. Yeah, it's really interesting. And at this point, I'm just like really curious about what the last map is going to be because, of course, we have this random element of surprise, so to say, with the, how the map veto works. So you can't really be sure. And we really talked a lot about the strategy of how to veto in, in these matchups because are you going to opt to try and remove their, your opponent's best maps or are you going to try to remove your worst since we have this random element, which makes the veto totally different? And Hiko? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. Like, Vox, being one of those teams who probably hasn't had a lot of time to practice against other what you would consider top teams, uh, I would think that they're, it looked like they, they dropped uh, Overpass, so that seems like a map that not only yeah. the other, that Navi is good on, but also they probably haven't practiced. Yeah, I, I want to ask the question as well, leaving Cobble in the hands of Navi, is that basically saying, do you, guys, do you want to play that one again and risk it? Or is that basically a free ban almost with Vox? I mean, at that point, Vox has just watched them play Cobble, so I wouldn't expect them to be afraid of it at all. Um, so, it's it's a, a risky thing. Casper, I straight away see you shaking your head. <laughs> yeah. you, you disagree? I don't think that the Navi is scared at all of playing couple because they just played like the best or the second best team in the world on this map, and it's going to be a totally different matchup in this case where you don't have people like all of my start running around getting those kills. So I don't think they're scared in that in that matter. And a, pri a prime example of that about kind of coming back to a map that you lost on is, of course, the LGB game. First time we saw LGB, we, they actually went 16-3 to best Penta. And then Penta just stepped up their game, won one game, and then went back on the same map, Dust 2, against that very team and proceeded to win 16-3. Uh, so, but no, yeah, that's absolutely right. It was, sorry, it was 16-3 originally, and they managed to do even better with 16-12, turning it completely on its head, which is incredible from Penta. And so, I mean, do you agree, Lauren, that... To, that you can come back to a map, even if it's just one game away or two games separating the two, and completely revolutionize your performance. Revolutionize? Maybe not, but uh, you know, different moments equal different things. Your team warms up better, a team starts to realize the mistakes they maybe made internally the first time playing around and go, guys, why are we making these silly mistakes? Come on, you know, we are better than this. It's, I think it's just a matter of they're warming up for one, and we're starting to see the purer results that you could have probably seen earlier on. And that's down to the players you have on the team. If you have a good coach, if you have a good analyst, you're going to be able to evolve your play style. If yeah. you don't, if you're a team who are just you know five five gun shooters, then you know you're not going to be able to evolve that quickly. That's going to come after time. Been getting some uh, breaking updates from our touchline reporter Jeff at the uh, Hellraisers CLG game, which Hellraisers are 11-1 up in. Yeah. Oh. And, of course, when I hear that, I think I see Inferno, Inferno. as a confirmed map. Ooh. We haven't seen it yet this so far for us, and that is going to be the confirmed one. Of course, fun fact for you, fun fact Friday, it's not, is it even Friday? <laughs> is uh, Sponge, who said Inferno is our favorite map, or at least for him it is. They're starting on T, I think, as well, which we know their T side actually sometimes supersedes their CT the way they play it. They feel more confident if they get that going really early. Yeah, we saw that in the yeah. off-flank qualifiers, uh, Hiko. And, and even what I was saying before, like Inferno is definitely, if I had to pick a map that I thought Vox could win on, it would be Inferno. Like That is the, the map that, other than Dust2, everybody has played, everybody has seen exactly what every team does. Uh, I would definitely ex expect Vox to have watched all of Navi's demos, probably know exactly what they're going to be coming into. So as I said, like I think that Inferno was, you know, a good pick for them. And Casper. Yeah, I agree. I think that Vox is more prepared for Navi than Navi is for Vox. With that being said, that offline qualifier result was against a very poor Dignitas at that time. Like the thing about Dignitas is they have such a good lineup on paper, but they just doesn't seem to show any progress right now. So, but that that T half is something to note. And are they going to be able to rag out? Probably not 12 rounds like last time, but if they can get like five or six, I have a good faith in them. So yeah. Do you feel that uh, Navi will have underestimated their opponent? Do you think Navi will have done the same research on Vox that Vox will have done on Navi? Not at all, but I don't think they're going to underestimate them at this point. But I totally agree with like the question that I don't think they really prepared that much for Vox. They're probably more scared of the domestic matchup against Flipside, which they won quite convincingly. But I mean, they see themselves as a stronger team than Vox, and they have way better chances of like getting experience on the international scene. So. You can see the teams in huddle there. And uh, one last point I want to touch on for Navi is Everyone describes them as a, t a predictable T side, of course, with the occasional kind of spanner in the works sometimes. But a, t a, t a T side, especially on Inferno, which is notoriously a slower T attack for most, 
is that going to be tough for Fox, maybe especially on this land, land environment? Uh, let's start with you, Hiko. Uh, the last major I was actually at, I, I believe we, if it wasn't the major, we played Navi very recently on Inferno specifically, and I know exactly, like, you want to save your smokes as long as you can, but the way they play T-side, like, as I was talking about before, they'll go up early banana, they'll, they'll cause a ruckus there, they'll make you waste your smokes, and they'll, they'll just wait. And they'll try executing with, like, 10, 15 seconds left, and they're actually able to uh, produce rounds for doing yeah. that. So I would hope that Vox would be ready for that. I would hope that Vox has done their homework. They know exactly what they do, and they're able to, to, to counter that exactly. Kind of not get kind of ants in their pants and just sit it out. <laughs> Uh, Lauren. Well, I, I hope it, they're going to play it to the way they did before because it was Top Gun who was actually at the top of Banana, like a super experienced player who should be in theory, you know, he's not one of the younger guys who come in, maybe like the hot, talented, you know, the new guys to the block, but he's, he's certainly an experienced head. He should be calm in this. If Navi are doing it, we're going to see quite the interesting battle there. Yeah, and Casper. The point to make is that even though we talked about, you know how Navi plays and they probably watched a lot of demos of how the Navi style is. It's completely different when you actually play against it. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah, you have to really control yourself not to use those smokes in the way that you have been doing for the last like 12 months. And I'm not really sure if they can. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really, I'm scared of Vox not doing it because it's yeah. going to be awful then. So, Casper, do you think that basically Vox need to treat Navi as someone completely different? Like they're, they're prepared for EU teams, but Navi, it's something else, and they need to be treated accordingly. Yeah, they need to, because if you play like any other team on Inferno, you would be more scared of like the fast pushes, the gaining map control very early. And if you use your smokes to prevent that, Navi's just going to wait back and execute late. And the thing, like Hiko said, is they can actually get rounds when there's 15 seconds left and they're going to go for a bomb side. And normally you panic in this situation because you're like, as a CT, you're like, no way that we're going to lose a round with 15 seconds left. They're not even on the bomb side yet. That and then it happens. Yeah, and then it happens. Okay, guys, prediction time. I know it's uh, exciting. Of course, we're going to be going straight on into the game now without the breaks. Going to start on my left this time, Stuart. Well, if you've been involved oh, with yeah. Navi, they've lost, so I'm going to go for Vox. <laughs> okay, so the Navi curse may be uh, continuing for you and Lauren. I've got, I've got to go for Vox. I, I like a good underdog, and they're certainly living up to it. And I wish Don't the frown camera, at me. I wish the camera caught that there. You just saw Spencer's <laughs> face like, hmm. Maybe not. So what about you, Spencer? You got your eyes on, I assume, maybe the other side of the court. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give it to Navi. I actually think it'll be closer to like 16 to 7 for Navi. I'm going to write these down. Very one-sided. Oh, we're going mind. for score. Well, just because, don't forget, Spencer, you got the exact score prediction last time we did this. So what was it, 16-7? 16-7. 16-7. Heard it here first, guys. The mystic that is Hiko. 16-7 to Navi. And Casper, what about you? I'm going to go 16 to 9, just so I'm a little above <laughs> you, but without to being an idiot. So I go 16 to 9, because I think Vox is going to get some good things out of the T-half, but that's because Navi is going to have some silly rounds. I've seen them play this map before, where I've been like, why did you guys do that? Because they're normally a really strong team, but sometimes it's like doing a silly round. But I expect Navi to win this one, so I'm going to go 16 to 9 for Navi. 16 to 9 to Navi. So that's two for two, guys. It's time for you to let us know as well with that hashtag ESL1 and over at ESLCS. But now it's time for your casters. We had, uh, was it Pandas before? Pandas? So I think yep. now it maybe it's Danders. Over to you guys with D-Man and Anders. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I am joined by the general himself, <laughs> uh, top of Reddit right now, doing fantastic stuff. But it is going to be Navi versus Vox, and it's actually on... Inferno, which is Vox's favorite map, as we pointed yeah. out. But yeah, I mean, it's a map that they did very well on. And they started off on the T side up against Team Dignitas in the offline qualifiers. And they went 12-3. Yeah. I'm not sure if they can do the same to Na'Vi, but they are a good T side. Look at what Na'Vi are doing. This is weird as all hell. Edward's the only one on the bomb side. He's already been tagged down to two health. And then everyone else from Na'Vi was heading down Banana, and they still are. And then when they engage, they kind of slow for a moment. I'm not sure this is the best choice for Navi. I think they, they need to keep pushing at this point here. Ace up, going to be taking, uh, or going to be going down to Seized, and he will fall back a little bit. That's a great headshot from Seized. He needs more. Edward still alive on two health. Take Sponge, and this is looking good for Navi. Pistol King, can he keep them alive? But Havoc will get the bomb plant down. Now they're going to push on towards A side. Is it going to be enough? Guardian tagged up pretty heavily by Havoc, but they know exactly where he is. Lands the headshot. Edward's still alive with next to no hit points. Gets himself in there. They've cleared off the site. And it is just the young JKS trying to keep them away from the defuse. He does, but he's not got time. That should be a clean defuse. And Edward on two health survives and gets the defuse. Navi with the CT round. That was a round that where. 
Navi put all their members in the wrong bomb site, and Vox start pushing the bomb site where there's no one in, and yet they still don't win the round. That's crazy, and it's obviously down to those headshots from uh, from Seized and Edward starting off with those two kills, making such a big difference. So, kind of quite an exciting start to this match, and I'm I'm curious about Navi doing that. That seems to me like they've done research, because uh, otherwise you wouldn't do that. You can, you've seen people with three, sometimes three in the A bomb site or in B bombs early on in pistol rounds, but not four, never four. I wonder if it's something they did against Dignitas. People watch their demos back maybe. Have a, the only man with the Tech-9 here hasn't gone quite the same as Fnatic would run, which is the armor and that Tech-9, but P250 is all round for the rest of Vox. Of course, they are up against two M4s though for Navi. And he said, ah, does take down Seize. Look across, it's just a simple pick, but it is a bit of a point rusher onto B site now. Tazer are the man that's opened up this. Starix is the only man standing there, but Vox are not executing fully on this one there. Delaying, pulling out the smokes. The grenades have already been thrown out. Starix does manage to recover Seed's own grenade, so he should be okay for now, and he's got support coming in the form of Guardian. It's very interesting to see Vox only picking up one Tech-9 and P250s for the rest of it. That's something we wouldn't see a lot of European teams. In fact, no European teams will do this. Um, so I'm curious. Guardian, though, with a good opening. Not hitting the, the next kill just yet, but they're giving him time, or they're being given time by that Molotov there. So going to force them back in here. 30 seconds left, and Navi, they shouldn't have a problem here. This should be easy. They know it's a two-man rotate, so they're going to try and race it. And they will see, of course, Edwin and Zeus sitting deep on the pit in the truck. Top gun, though. Are they going to go straight around? No, it's going to be CTR straight on towards site. Zeus will spot this one. They're in perfect place, but that smoke will cut things down. The bomb plant will go in once again from Havoc, so that's two bomb plants running. I don't think Havoc's going to hold this one out, though. They are collapsing it all around him. There is Edward finds the final frag, and the defuse will follow. But, but two plants. That's a huge success. I'm impressed by Vox. They, they made that work even better than I, than I thought. I thought they were going to get shut down much earlier than that. So uh, well played on their part. It's... It's a real pleasure watching Zeus be as calm as he is in getting these kills. He's looking sort of very robotic almost, just just not really worried about anything. Uh, it's a really nice thing to do, because Navi's one of those teams that they they just get very emotional when they play. They well, don't show it outwardly, but they go on full tilt mode when they really start tilting. I'm not sure we heard that interview. <laughs> they were pretty outward there, like basically admitting that they did get a little bit destroyed by Fnatic in the previous matchup. Maybe that is still playing on their minds, but at the moment they have started off well on the CT side. And Vox need to start getting something on the board. They have invested heavily. It is a full buy, of course, with those two plants. The AKs and head armor is come out. Grenades to top banana, and it's cool seeing Navi actually taking this much control of banana because so many teams um, especially in the European region. I've actually given up holding Banana at all, and I'm just holding it inside the bomb site. So I'm a big fan of what Navi are doing. Good grenade out, gonna do a collective 40-some uh, damage, and that's all right. Edward trading Guardian for Sponge then, and we're back into a 4v4. Still more than a minute left, so shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be a problem here for Vox to try and find one more opening, although Suit will take down Havoc, and obviously that is gonna make it a little bit more tricky. Yeah, Havoc had managed to get the opening frag on Guardian, opening up a side a little bit, but Good reactions, good cover. And that does mean it's going to be an A site push, and this is not working out for Vox once again. That is, he's an R going down. JKA is going to flash himself out of the pit there. Doesn't manage to land the frag on Zeus, so he needed to make that count. Top Gun's been taken down, the grenade will land, but JKS is simply going to try and back off. And now the hunt is on for Navi. They want to get this AK out of his hand. They've got him locked in. This is this is a little bit this is hard to watch, isn't it? Because you know this is not going to have a happy ending. But he walks into Edward's shot there. Susan Edward, each of them picking up a double kill. Navi, a uh, really important round for them. Only losing only losing one person. Well, we do see, of course, Navi on your screens. They did have a very good start to the previous matchup against Flipside, and they went a dominant performance, honestly, and actually both these teams really did post some pretty big score. I think both of them were 16-2 against Flipside, so they've not had a good tournament here, of course. Guardian, though, has a peek across, and as it stands, Starix is setting himself up, and this is going to be a slow push from Vox. Very much so. Uh, they do have the, uh, the Tech Nines, they have two P250s as well, but they don't have any grenades. I wish they had just one flashbang, one smoke, or anything here, Vox, to make it, make it connect. But still, these pistols are pretty damn good. Seuss picking up one, then a double. 
And he's fine. Well, Edward Sawyer is going to go down to Sponge. Then Zeus also caught in a weird position. They're looking good for Vox here. They're going to get into the bomb site. And they will get the bomb plan. They'll also get the two kills here. Anything now is just a huge bonus. That, that is an incredible eco round. Isidar's got himself his hand on the AK. Sponge will get taken down. So he's just going to get collapsed upon. He may even be able to get Guardian on this balcony. No, he goes for Seize. That's going to give himself away. He'll get taken down. Easy defuse for Na'Vi. But... Again, a bomb plant down from an eco, getting two kills. Not a bad round. Oh, definitely not. Um, so, I mean, if they had as much success in the eco rounds uh, that they, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, if they if they carry that over to actual rifle rounds, this could be a little bit different. But it's still very early days. I wouldn't say this is time to panic for Vox. But the one thing, uh, D-Man, that you were bringing up earlier is that in the offline qualifiers, they didn't actually have the most success on the terrorist round. So maybe yeah. it is a, a bit of an early warning sign for Vox here. Um, that they're not uh, that they're not getting these rounds in because they've been close sometimes. It's it's something Sponge has talked about how uh, the weakness of their CT side. We do see now the AWP from Guardian. We'll see what he does with that. He's going to go straight towards second. Actually got caught and nade that. They're not going to push through apps just yet though. It was a second mid rush up. That smoke will stop that attack dead in its tracks. But there we go. Smokes onto quad. That's going to force Edward away. And actually he the one he was the one that rotated away from CT Arch. So, again, they have got themselves in position. Guardian does take down AZR in the apartments. He's going to come back around. He's got four members all on the site. That grenade, the second grenade to land on Guardian. But he's managed to successfully navigate his way to the back of his pit. And I don't think they know he's there. No, they seem to be aiming up at apartments instead. Top gun here, good position. Tries to take the fight with Seize, but not going to come out on top here. They, oh, they don't see Guardian yet. Havoc in the corner. Takes one, goes for a little bit more. Seized will take him out. Still a 2v2. And that bomb is ticking He's away burning. fast. <laughs> oh no, Sponge! Gonna die at the end, and JKS will fall seized with a quad kill in the round and enough time to make the defuse. What a retake coming out from Navi, and what a real shame for, for Vox, because that was actually a beautiful execution for, for them running Archway like that. And it's what they did in the other eco round. They actually just replicated what they did when they had the tech nines, and uh, it almost worked again. Almost, almost worked out. We do have an orb coming out from Havoc this time around. We'll see if that makes a difference. Guardian, of course, was smoked out pretty heavily. Wasn't able to really make use of that orb. Just sat quietly in that pit. Waited to try and get a pick. Here we go. Have a kind of line up the shot. Doesn't look like anyone's going to try and take the flick. The flash was enough to keep him down. Just got a peek. And that's all Guardian needed. The headshot in there. Immediately rotates round. Sees goes aggressive down. Banana gets himself too. Can he get a third? JKS and Sponge, the only men left standing for Vox. And this is all going wrong right now for Vox. I mean, they are just not able to make any impact on the Na'Vi defenses when they get the rifles. Yeah, it's... This is a brutal round. This is one of those sort of soul-destroying rounds because you, you you didn't get to do anything. You didn't even get to take the positions you wanted for your execution. Um, Seized adding a, you know more to the list of things you really shouldn't try and do do at home, which is he he ended up killing two people over at Banana by ADADing while holding down mouse one and actually somehow managed to get both those kills and that looked um, that looked crazy. I have no idea how that works out. Um, at the end of the day, it's seized still 10 0 and 1. Look how well he's playing. Yeah, this is big performance from him. It's something he's done. Honestly, he, he was the man that was attempting to take down Fnatic. He was by far the uh, highest fragger on the board. I think he was at 15 or so when Olaf Meister was at 20. But Starix right now, this could be a mow down. It will be. It's seized actually. They managed to pick it up. Starix could have done with a couple of them. He's only got two frags, bless him. But Seize just manages to take the hatful there. And that puts himself way at the top of the board now. Oh, we need to see more from, from Vox right now. Just a, uh, just a lot more. And I think part of the problem is actually Na'Vi being so aggressive in Banana right now. It's denying Vox so much space to move around. Look at the round after round, Na'Vi putting three people. This is really uncommon. If you're new to Counter-Strike, we know so many of you are. Uh, it's just not something that we regularly see. That 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 much emphasis on holding uh, Banana. Not anymore. Well, it's going to be a fast push, it seems, from Vox. I'd love to hear what they've got to say. Hopefully we can get a, try and get a listen in on the Vox m &O guys, but it doesn't look like it's going well, so I'm not sure I want to hear some colorful language. But let's try it anyway. Or not, <laughs> that's the case may be. We'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. Guardian, gonna pick up a second kill here. He said, ah, oh, does take down Seize. The bomb is planted, but 
He can't connect. He was in a 1v5 as well. It's so hard for him to really do much of anything. It's another round where Vox get into the bomb site. They get the bomb down, but they just they can't hold it. They they lose too many members going in, and they have because Navi make really quick rotations, and Navi can make those rotations based off of the banana position that they have. They're always going to be very near to the A bomb site, no matter how it turns out. So. Once Vox get in and put the bomb down, they're instantly in a position where they're defending, which means they never get to choose some really good afterplant positions. Uh, it's hard to deal. I, I don't know what the answer is, but right now Vox need to come up with a way of stopping Na'Vi from, from taking this control up here. They need to figure out something. And actually, Molotovs is the way that most European teams are handling it. Um, you watch Titan, you watch Fnatic on a map like this, they're gonna, they're oh. gonna firebomb all of top banana, basically. Oh, Sponge needed to make that one count. He does get seized down. They saw the second it was. I think it was Zeus that managed to get away. Yeah, just on 10 health, but he's got Sponge lined up, ready and waiting. He gets himself one. He knows there's another over in the graveyard. Azadar will get the bomb plant down. It's a three on two advantage for Vox. This could be their first round on the board, unless Guardian has something to say about it. They have a good setup, a lot of smokes out. That Molly will find its target. Azadar is burning out. He's forced to change position. But Starix and Guardian, they're going to move in as a two. Two-pronged attack coming around. Guardian rotated all the way to the quad side. Catches a glimpse in the pit. Doesn't manage to find him. Azadar in there. JKS does get the shutdown. Starix coming in, and it will be the first round on the board for Vox. They finally make it work out on the A side at the ninth chance. They've got the bomb plants in there a number of times. They've just not been able to find it. But finally, they held on. Yeah, there were a number of things that worked really well for the for the Australian team in that round. And, and notably, just to pick up on, on what we were talking about just a second ago, they actually managed this time around to get into really good after plants. One guy in apartments, one guy pit, one guy in sight. What we sometimes refer to as the Triangle of Doom over at the A bomb site. So really good stuff. But um, now they need to replicate it. They need to keep going. And now we're using those Molotovs to clear out the bottom of Banana, making sure Vox aren't holding there, but the Australians, they're not really worried about that anymore. They're moving fast. They say, all right, if you want Banana, we're going to take Archway instead. So just trying to trade map positions right now. Sue's so going to pick up the one kill there on Sponge, and Guardian will take down JKS. It's not looking good for Vox right now. Edward and Seized, and then Guardian again. It's Acer out all alone. 1v4, makes it a 1v3, and then goes down. Not a lot that they could do that around Vox. But I do still like the idea. I think it's smart. Instead of, like, you have two options what, when Na'Vi are doing what they're doing. Either you try and fight them at, at Banana, and if you can't do that, maybe instead you'll try and say, okay, if you take Banana quick, we'll do some, we'll, while you're doing that, we'll do something else instead with the rest of the map. And that's what they try to do that round. <laughs> what is Edward? <laughs> Edward by that's almost a little bit disrespectful. That's, that's a little cheeky. I like it. I, I want to see what he's doing with it, though. He's going to be up close in apartments? Yes, he is. That's where he's going with it, of course. He will. No, no, I thought he was going to push up deep. Oh, that smoke. It may actually work out, you know. Oh, that's going to be the information, and he is going to try and sneak in there. He's going to try and peek in there. Guardian is ready and waiting for them to pop out a boiler. Doesn't manage to get sponged down, though. With the smoke out, that grenade will be straight onto Sponge's lap. And that takes him straight to 36 health. And, well, I think Vox have been completely caught out here. Havoc's the one that's going to try and cause a problem, but they know exactly where they're going, and these pistols are not going to work. No, they really won't. Na'Vi not really showing themselves too much, and they're grouped up. They have good crossfires. It's going to be really rough here. Edward does only get the one kill in, so it's just, a, just for the fun of it, I suppose. Ace are here, not quite getting caught, but uh, regardless, not a lot he can do from this position. Yeah, he's at, uh, is going to get taken down quite cleanly. They even give Star exit as well, so that's all worked out well for him. Only just though, one health he landed on there. They nearly got taken down. 10 1 though is the score for Navi. They are looking in a solid, solid position right now with Vox's CT side. Not the strongest from the current offline qualifiers. And you can see, of course, Seized once again lapping up those kills. Although, arguably, he did get a hatful in the uh, Ecos. <laughs> and those are the most important frags, those those Eco frags. Just boost, the, boost your scoreline like that. That's what I would do. Grenades and uh, pistols and armor on that Vox side. They're going to get some good kills in here. In fact, JKS and Acedar, they're pushing through. They want Starix as well. He's out of bullets almost. Oh, but he gets the last kill as well, taking down Acedar. Great management coming out there from uh, from Starix. He could have tried to reload, and that would have killed him. Now Top Gun, 
the very unenviable position of having a 1v3 with 16 health to try and prevent his team from ecoing once more. This is what's on the board here for Vox. They might have an, another round of eco so late into the first half, first half of the game here. This is painful. I don't think they're going to let him hold it <laughs> to this AK, that's for sure. Soon as he peeks, he's going straight into the crosshairs of Starix and Zeus. And that's all we needed. Starix will get himself his eighth kill of the round. 11-1. Big, big score starting to be posted here for the CT side. And you have got to be looking forward to maybe when they have the second half. If Vox don't pick up that pistol, it could well be all over before it starts. I will make a prediction Ooh. that if we, if Navi get to move on into the, the quarterfinals here of this tournament, then if they play a different team, Fnatic, Envy, any other team you can think of, you won't see them doing this, this strat with the three members. Or they, it'll only work for a short amount of time if they do, I think. This is, this is really crazy uh, how much emphasis they're putting onto it. But, um, and they've relaxed it a little bit, you can tell, because now they're just kind of... Zeus is coming over there to throw a smoke and then... Or for a couple of grenades, and then he's back again into the middle here. So, uh, more towards Archway. 11-1, you're right. Edward with some really good kills, looking for a fourth one. And there it is. Easily taking care of Vox in the middle. We're into the 14th. This is a disaster. This, this is a very one-sided performance for Navi so far. And maybe the confidence boost that they're going to require moving through to the quarterfinals. Of course, who they're going to face, who only knows that is yet to be decided. But, of course, it would put them second seed in the group to move through. So you've got the chances of Envy currently in the top there. It won't be Fnatic, of course, because they were from the same group. A bit of a failed grenade coming out from Seized. Not really going to do much. Guardian taking a risk and getting the flick onto Sponge will take him down. Smokes off, and then she's going to fade away. But they'll leave Edward up here. This is, uh, apart from the initial aggression from Na'Vi, this is also a big mind game here. Because Vox are probably going to feel like, what are the chances? If there is someone left, why would it be a guy with a rifle in bedroom at this point? <laughs> um, very annoying. What else is annoying is missing that jump. And so many times I see pro players doing it as well, so it's... It's only half a million people watching, and don't I, worry. It, it makes you feel a little comfortable when a pro player misses it as well, but... Edward lurking once again. That was an easy two kills. And they are just reading Vox like a book in the position as they need every single time. And this is looking like a very one-sided match. 13-1, could it be 14-1? Almost the perfect half for Navi. I think they're going to be very happy with the way things are going right now. I think Vox have, they've been struggling to come up with what really works. And I think it took them so long to figure out that Na'Vi were, were, were not going to let them get Banana ever. And then what to do with the rest of the map once they, once they had that. And maybe by the time they figured it out, Na'Vi was already trying to switch it up a little bit. Just trying to, trying to, to rotate back quicker from Banana. Seized, winning that fight once again, taking down Sponge. They keep wanting to get through here, but there's, there's two more people. Seized, taking down a double kill. and. He's going to have to try for a little bit more, but even even getting that kill, they've made no progress. Yeah, there's still two members. Zeus and Starx ready and waiting for them. And this, is, this is just confident play we're seeing now. This is, this is a team that's just so confident in their abilities against the opposition that they're just starting to make these crazy plays that, that will work because the other team is trying to wait for that slow play, that slow push, or try and make the picks, but instead they're peeking out and getting the headshots. And that is a 14-1 half for Navi. Very, very dominant performance over the Aussies so far for the Ukrainian team. So, a, a quick rundown of how the, the metagame has changed, at least in the European Counter-Strike scene, uh, over towards Banana. Essentially, in the beginning, uh, what would happen is people would try and go for the smoke at the bottom of Banana, and then they would control the CT side of the, of the Banana by just simply being there. Then they countered that from the terrorist side, ended up being people trying to boost over and look over that smoke in. And then later on, actually, the terrorists just decided, instead of doing that, why don't we just throw enough Molotovs and Grenade at top banana that you can't actually hold it as a CT, and that's kind of where we're at now. And then most teams have decided, well, instead, we'll just hold it inside the B-bomb site. Like, well, we haven't figured out a way to do it. Now, now we've almost come, you know, like full circle and said, all right, we'll just go back to the old thing where we smoke and run, in, in, except not just two people, three people down there. I think actually the last time I saw a team really doing that was probably Dignitas with Fetish. Uh, no, sorry, no, that wasn't it. Sorry, it was Glaive calling... 
uh, one of the older teams. I'm well, to you're mixing Danish teams up, yes. so that could be anyone. <laughs> that could be anyone, yeah, right. Especially with all the roster changes. Yeah. But, uh, some of Glaive's teams have, have been doing it in the past where they try and take that aggressive control on Banana, but you have to go back really a long time, like a year back, to find that kind of play. It's really it's really interesting. I'm actually, I'm, in, I'm intrigued. Now, I, I hope desperately that we'll see Navi on another Infernal map in this tournament. I really want to see that. I mean, it, it, obviously, to put things in perspective, Vox did lose 16-3 to Fnatic on Inferno as well previously. They're having a bit of a mare on, on Inferno to save, save the day. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, they, they said it themselves. It's like, well, we were confident, obviously, when they qualified. And then they saw the groups and it was like, well, uh, I'm not too sure what politically correct words we could use on air to, to what their reaction would be. It's like, and by the way, your first game is Fnatic. Currently the number one seed in the world. Yeah, and then you get to play Navi And next by time. the way, yeah, Navi is in the group. If you beat Flipside, you get against Navi, which of course is not going too well for them. Here we go, though. Pistol round is going to be very, very important. And hopefully, I'm hoping I can get a listen in on what exactly is going to go through Vox's mind. Let's see if it works this time. Oh, it's like it's it's yeah. Come on, boys. Fire up. I'll let you smoke first. Every round. Smoke. Four steps, Nana. Just rush. Nice. There. I think it's Reloading, nice. 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 Nothing, nothing more, nothing more. Oh, I'm in safe, second. Safe. I'm in second. I'm sitting in the truck. I'll re smoke soon. Can I be covered? Yeah. yeah. Re smoke now, re smoke now. Go. Bomb down, down. mid. Bomb down, bomb down. Well done, boys. Peak, One more. Peak. I'm spotting, Luke. I'm spotting, Luke. I'm spotting, Luke. I'm spotting, hide. I smoked it. Could be second. Back. Yeah, come with me. Coming with you guys. Hold on. Wait, wait. No. Oh, right. Carry on, Johnson. Come on, boys. That's it. And again, boys. Right. This is Let's happening. Win this. Let's win this. I actually can't believe it's happening. Come on. It's actually happening. <laughs> it's it's happening. Happening. <laughs> it is actually happening, people. Let's see if it will work out for them. So, good, solid pistol round coming out from Vox Eminor. It's good to hear a couple of Aussie accents on the uh, team speak there. I think also you, you get an insight into why people do enjoy Vox, because they, they have some pretty, <laughs> some pretty bubbly personalities. It's great. Um, they very nearly missed the smoke timing over at B. That was, that was half a second away. If that, had, if that smoke had gone down like half a second later, Navi wouldn't have stopped. They would have kept pushing, and I'm not sure Vox could have stopped this. So that was actually, re you heard the call come down. I'm putting down the smoke, and it was right on point. It actually stopped them. Um, that is not so easy. Uh, we've seen it time and again where people put down that smoke late over at B, and see terrorist teams in the pistol round, they won't stop. Whether it's a smoke or a Molotov, people will keep running, because it's definitely the smarter choice, but uh, this time they were on point. Guardian has got himself up at CT Arch already. Havoc is peaking, but this Deagle, if he lands the opening headshot, he's got Tech Nines to just pile on around this corner, and there it is! Guardian straight on point. Sponge does manage to get seized down, but this is trouble for Vox already. AZR has to land these shots, but there's gonna be Na'Vi piling on into sight, and the rotate from Vox has to be really on point to try and retake this site now. I don't know what to say. Guardian with two great kills. And the best thing about the first one is he looked at his teammates first, just saying, watch me, are you, are you watching? I'm, I'm just going to look. Are you watching me? Here we go. And then he opens up on that one. Guardian third headshot of the round here with the Deagle going for a little bit more. He's looking, and there it is. Takes oh down God. the last one. Four headshots with the Deagle. And that is it. Vox get destroyed in this round. Well, just like that, the dream is shattered. So many times we've seen the second round turn around and it's ordinarily the Tech 9 that's to blame, but when somebody is that skillful with a Desert Eagle, you really can't uh, wish anything against them. It was a fantastic round. So Navi now with the rifles up against a semi-eco, just a couple of Deagles. Let's see if Vox themselves can try and make it work out, but you've got to feel this is maybe it. Oh, hello. Havoc with a Deagle of his own gets revenge on Guardian. That is, that's the right way to handle that situation, isn't it? You know, you, you say, fine, we can two can play at this game. It's so late in this, uh, in this, in the day here for Vox. They are really having a hard time, but it's going to be a second kill with a Deagle, taking down Edward as well. And um, it'd be interesting if they could make this work <laughs> with pistols, at least. Sponge is going to be up close and personal on Zeus. Havoc gets a third with the Desert Eagle now. Gonna go for the fourth, not gonna work out. Starix shuts that down in his tracks, and now Azadar all alone on truck. He will get one. Can he get seized down? Yes, he will! And a great round from Vox. They've gotta pull out so many more of those, but my god, that's a bit of an ego boost for them. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And um, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. It's it's a really long comeback. Probably one of the most incredible comebacks if, if Vox could somehow make it work. <laughs>
Uh, but I don't want to count them out yet. We'll see. And again, now he's an emotional team. They are definitely confident right now. They're feeling good. I wish we could speak, uh, we could, you know, understand Russian or Ukrainian, so we could we could tune in and, and understand what's going on. But uh, at either at either rate, we're gonna have to do with Vox for now. Who, I mean, they said it's happening. They were feeling confidently. Well, let's hope they can produce a little more magic so this game goes on a little bit longer. There's two men from Navi sitting up in that B side. They have yet to make that successful, but Starrix is waiting, and we know how devastating these Tech Nines can be. There's a bit of a decoy seized, and Zeus taking a peek, but they already see the shots from Top Gun. That's going to force him back. They're going to try and see if they can force the rotate, but Vox are not falling for it just yet. Bomb is in play in Banana. Look at this. It's a double peek, actually, down the mid. They see Edward, and that immediately has triggered Havoc to rotate. The rest of Fox are following. Guardian with a big opening on top. Gone in the back. JKS has to survive. He won't survive. The Tech Nine going to deal with him. Guardian goes down, but the bomb will or should be planted here. Oh, what? He hit the headshot jumping? <laughs> there is no way. Oh, I wish we could go back and watch that. What a shot. Seuss going to take down Sponge. If I really, I'm, I'm doubting myself. I'm not sure if I saw that, but if I did, that's unreal. It's a 1v3 for AZR to keep his team in the game, in the tournament. Can he go big? It's going to be a really tough ask. He gets himself one. There's another one cheekily hiding around new box. The bomb is ticking. He needs to make some tracks. It's going to be seized. The pops out. He knows where he is. It's not going to happen. Navi will go through. They are in the quarterfinals. And Vox, unfortunately, will go down 16-3. It was a solid, solid CT performance from Navi. No doubt about it. 14-1 in the first half. And a well-deserved victory. I mean, without a doubt, really shocking performance from the from the Navi team. Great mental comeback as well. Um, as, as Guardian was saying, going into the match, we got destroyed in our last one on Cobblestone. It was really painful for them. Uh, managed to turn around mentally and just come back into this game and, and, and move on. So really good job on their part. Uh, from, from Vox's point of view, they were um, they were they had some really great rounds early on. Even though they didn't win them, so many rounds where they managed to sneak around Archway, get into a bomb site, put the bomb down. That's a sign of a team that's about to take a lot of T rounds because that could be really rough. Uh, but then, like after that, they uh, maybe maybe just they got destabilized early on because they didn't win those rounds. They just uh, tilted a little bit because uh, after that, after we got into like the the eight and zero territory, it was looking really bad. It was a solid performance overall from Navi, especially after that Fnatic game, the brutal Fnatic game. We're going to go over to the stage, though. They are ready to interview one of the winners. Thank you so much, D-Man. I'm joined by a Guardian. Guardian, a pretty confident win. How does it make you feel? Uh, pretty good after a lost game. So we, we are happy that we are proceeded to playoffs. So yeah, it feels nice. Now, obviously, this represents a bounce back for you. You won, lost, won. Is that, you take that? Does that make you happy for the day, ending day one? Of course it does, but yeah, we could have played better against Fnatic, but yeah, it, it, we feel happy and confident in playoffs, so hopefully we'll do our best in playoffs and we'll show better games. Now, tomorrow is still an unknown factor, so do you have anything, predictions, teams you'd like to see? What are, you, what are you thinking? Actually, we don't know which team are we going to play, which group. So, I don't know who are we going to play. So, we will see. We will watch the games and discuss about it. And so, tonight, games, discuss, chill out. Anything else on the agenda for you? Uh, we will do everything. We will watch the games, then we will chill and we will go eat and some stuff like this. Well, you've been absolutely fantastic. The crowd's been enjoying you. I mean, thank you so much. And... Again, congratulations. Thank you. And for now, we'll go over to Machine. Thank you very much, you well-bearded man. It's time now for us to talk a little bit about how well Navi performed in that one. Of course, we were. I'm going to have to first say commiserations to this side of the desk for being very, hey, very look. voxy. I think is the best way to describe it. There was a lot of Vox support on this side. I didn't have a choice but to pick Vox. Okay. A holiday in it. Well, sorry. Research. Research. I'm Research. Australia I, and everything. It was the curse. The curse is broken. Ah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Either way, though, another thing to mention is, of course, your guys' predictions. You guys gave Vox more rounds than they actually managed to secure. Of course, that one ending 16-3 16, uh, 16 I have down on here. Is that correct? Yeah. Wow. I was, like, I was like, hang on, that doesn't sound... Oh, it is. Okay, so 16-3, Vox really struggling to get off the starting line with that one. And the first question I'm actually going to uh, throw at you guys is now, now we have our confirmed four. Penta, Envy, Fnatic, Navi. How does that look for Navi? Well, I don't... I think Navi is a bit scared of Envy, obviously. I mean, they don't want to face that team. And they have one good thing for them going out of this group stage, which is they are unable to play Fnatic again before the final. So they only have one team which they're going to really fear, who's most likely going to be envious. I could see them being a bit scared of... Uh, in a, no, not NIP, maybe Virtus Pro as well. I don't, see, I don't think they're going to be scared of NIP, to be honest. What about you, Spencer? No, I, I agree. Out of, out of the teams that are left, Navi has the... Uh, they're fortunate enough to have been in Fnatic's group. They have already lost to them. So the only chance that they can actually play Fnatic again will be in the finals. So the fact that now one out of, I, I would think the other top team they might be afraid of right now would be Envious, as Casper said. Um, so now they're in a pretty good position. I mean, the only other team, as Casper said again, would be Virtus Pro. And I don't think that Navi would really bat an eye about, again, about Virtus Pro. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned that. So you, you feel that if Navi went up against Virtus Pro, they could bring it back up, turn it up again. Because uh, we were talking before, and you guys were very confident in Navi. You guys said from the start that they sometimes do struggle to start in majors, but they usually grind their way through, and that's when the results start coming. And actually, we'll turn to you for Lauren. That's one, Lauren. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to eat some humble pie over here. And I owe this man a lot of drinks, apparently, now. Uh, orange juice, of course. But it's, uh, I don't know, it's... It's an RV. It's hard to doubt those names. You know, they seem to be slow building at times. You, you kind of write them out and you kind of see other teams starting to get these real powerhouse rounds going. But they're still Navi. You, you, you can't write them out too much. And obviously, they did do, do a great job against Fox. There's not a single result at a major that backs up any of your confidence, by the way. <sighs> I'm just, just throwing this out there. But they're they such should not good be players. afraid of NIP. They should not be afraid of Virtus Pro. Big game players. NIP who have been in every major final. Virtus Pro, the champions here. They should be afraid of all of those names and more. This, yes, they beat Vox, but they looked awful against Fnatic, and they're going to have to bring a hell of a game tomorrow. And some individuals that have to step up their game, of course. Even in that one there, Starix was not was at the bottom of the scoreboard, and Seized was at the top. And the first thing, we, whenever we'd start talking about Navi, was you, Casper, you highlighted, if Seized performs, Navi are going to start getting through, get to the quarterfinals. And again, Starix at the bottom of the scoreboard. We'll start with you, actually, Casper. Yeah, I want to defend Starix for this specific matchup due to being the backup player on B, which Spencer knows like the roll of is like really sad because you're just going to have to rotate between the bump sides, not really see that much action, especially with the way that uh, they decided to try and attack this banana. Navi went with the deep smoke and banana and the double Molotov, which denied all map control for Vox in this uh, part of the map, which forced Vox Eminence to go up for the fast mid rushes, which didn't really pay off for them. So I can say that Starix, I mean, you can't blame him too much on this one, and they won big anyway, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at him at least. Yeah, and you know, other than the, the B aggressiveness that they were showing, um, Guardian was just showing no fear at yeah. all, re-peaking middle, throwing his own smokes, pushing through his smokes. Um, he, I think he got a pick like six or seven times that match. So anytime you're already going down a player that early to an opera picking mid, you almost have no chance already. And yeah. the fact that they were already pushing down Banana yeah. to cut off anyone who actually made it up the ramp, there was no chance Vox even had. Any closing points you have for Navi and their chances in the, in the coming quarterfinals? I, I think we have to point out that we've yet to actually see NIP or Virtus Pro on that stage. I guess the other team you'd put in the same bracket as them, or at least in the same group, would have been Fnatic. And these guys look phenomenal. Um, for Navi, if we haven't seen the teams that they're most likely to face, I think the danger is still unknown to them. And I think there's still a lot to be said about the last two teams that could come in and look absolutely formidable, formidable or they could look slightly weak. So I think it's all yet to be seen. And there's a lot more to be seen. Of course, there was an incredible surprise result, which we're going to be talking about uh, straight after the break. But I'm going to have to bring it up now just because I'm still looking at my paper like, wow. NIP versus CLG will be the next <laughs> game. That means CLG up against Hellraisers. And it went down to the wire. Of course, 2 to 13 on the T side. Like that, that, that straight away, I'm going to start with actually you, Hiko. Of course, you played the guys. That shouldn't have happened. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Like, if you, if you actually consider uh, CLG started on CT, I believe. And okay. Oh, opposite. CLG started T. So, so, okay, so CLG started T and ended up only having two rounds. Um, going into a half like that, on, especially on Nuke, yes, Nuke is CT sided, but being down that big against. 
an American team, you know, almost all American teams are known for being emotional. Almost all American teams are known for if they have a bad start, it's very hard for them to grind back. You know, fortunately for CLG, we saw them grind back at uh, the offline qualifier, and obviously they were able to grind back against Hellraisers, which I think most people would consider a team that would have a lot higher skill cap than CLG. So I'm very surprised by that. And we're going to have to go into so much more detail about that one. Because, I mean, that is a result. That is a surprise result. I've actually, I did make a small error there. Actually, we haven't got the final result from NIP. They're currently 13-7 up. And so we'll have that result very, very shortly to confirm who CLG are going to be going up against after the break. Until then, though, guys, do get onto social media at ESLCS. And we hope to see you very shortly.